Gary, the Traveling Yogi. Thanks for joining me today. This is our first practice of the new year, and I thought we could ring in the new year by practicing anew. And what I mean by that is that I'd like you to practice yoga today as though everything that we do is new to you, that you've never done it before and see if you can experience each pose and each flow as though it was brand new and just see how that sits for you. Let's begin in a seated posture. Just let your eyes close down. Allow yourself to become present to this practice of beginning anew. Feel your body. Feel your sitting bones resting on the mat. Feel anchored in the sitting bones. Each time you breathe in, each time you take a new breath, let your spine lengthen, let your shoulders relax, and then bring them back a little bit and down. And just feel the breath flowing gently through your body. We'll take about five breaths in our practice of beginning anew. Let each breath lengthen if you like. Noticing the beautiful flow of the breath. Allow each breath to signify a beginning. A couple more. And let's do one more breath. <sighs> well, let's begin our practice now by bringing the hands to the knees, palms facing down. Sit up nice and tall, You're so your chest is rising, your chin is in a nice neutral position, so you don't need to lift the chin up or tuck it. Just have it nice and neutral, your gaze is forward. Now relax the shoulders a little bit if you've brought tension into the back, moving into this posture, and then draw your navel in a little bit. Now just look off to the left and then to the right, and again to the left and to the right. Bring it back to center, lift the chin just gently, and then bring the chin towards the sternum. Inhale, lift the chin, and exhale, and bring the chin to the sternum. Level the chin again, take a breath. Now right ear towards right shoulder. Head back to center, left ear towards left shoulder. And right ear towards right shoulder. And again, left ear towards left shoulder. Bring the chin back so it's level. Head is nice and level. Take a twist and look to the left. Keep your hands on your knees, look to the right. And to the left. And to the right. Bring it back to center, bring the arms up and overhead. Bring the hands together, interlace the fingers. Stretch the palms up towards the sky. Remember to draw your navel in. Reach up nice and high. Take a little bend to the left and a little bend to the right. And back to center and to the left and over to the right. Back to center, reach up high, then bring the hands behind you. Bring the hands down now, so the fingers are pointing towards the back of your mat, the palms are pressing into the mat. On an inhale, lift your chin, press your chest towards the sky. As you exhale, release your hands from the floor, bring the hands in front of you, take opposite elbows, bring the elbows down towards the knees, your chin comes towards your chest. Inhale, reach up. This time, cactus the elbows, palms face forward, the elbows about the same level as the shoulders. On an inhale, lift your chin, and as you exhale, level the chin and take opposite elbows again. Bring the elbows down towards the knees and chin to chest. Inhale, rise, reach up through the elbows, keep opposite elbows, stretch up high, and then release the hands, bring them out to a T and then behind you, Press the palms into the mat again. On an inhale, lift your chin. And as you exhale, level the chin, bring the arms out to a T. Now bend the elbows, touch the fingers to the tops of the shoulders, and then straighten the arms. Do that a second time, touching the shoulders and straightening the arms. Now just gentle fists and rotate the hands at the wrists. 
We go around a couple times one way, nice and slow, and then a couple times the other, staying aware of what it feels like to rotate the hands at the wrist. Now release the hands, release the fists that is, and then just play with the fingers. A little dancing finger exercise, I like to call this or think of it. And now make circles with the arms, keep the arms straight. Keep reaching out through the shoulders. And go around a couple times one way and then back the other, as big as circles as you want. Big deep breaths as the circles get wider. And then release the hands. Bring them down. And then come down to the elbows. So you're in sort of a reclining position. And straighten your left leg. And then bend. And straighten. And bend. Now bring the left knee over to the right side across the body. And then bring the knee forward as you straighten the legs. And then the knee comes off to the left. And then the knee comes towards the chest with the knee bent. So as you can see, we're just making big circles with that left knee. We'll do that about three times around. And what we're beginning to do is to feel a sense of motion in that left hip joint. And now straighten the left leg and rotate the foot at the ankle. You can run a couple of times one way, maybe three. If you feel like it, go back the other way. And then bring the foot down. We'll do the same thing with the right leg. Bend the right knee, bring it towards your face, and then straighten the leg, and bend, and straighten, and bend. Now bring that knee over to the side, cross the body, and then straighten the leg, knee comes forward towards the front of the mat, knee bends off to the right, now bring your knee to your chest. So we've just described a big circle with the knee. And just like we did on the other side, we're going to go around a few times. And then when you're ready, come back to center and straighten the leg. And let's rotate the foot at the ankle. For me, that's a really awkward feeling movement. I'm not exactly sure why. Then maybe back the other way if you like. You can bring that right leg down now, bend the knees, come to a seat again. Now, once you're seated, bring your arms out to a T, palms face forward, take a twist to the left, and then take a twist to the right, and to the left. We're beginning dynamic stretching now, and to the right. And one more time to the left, and then back to the right, and then back to center. With dynamic stretching, reach the arms up and overhead, and exhale the hands to heart center. Take a breath. And let the breath go. With dynamic stretching, we're not holding stretches for any period of time. Just a second or two. Bring the arms out to a T again. Palms face down this time. Reach the hands apart from one another so you feel a little bit of stretch between the shoulder blades and in the shoulders. Bring the right hand down. Reach the left hand up and over. Stay grounded in that left sitting bone and reach with the left hand till you feel a stretch on the left side body. Just for a second or two, rise back up. The core stays engaged. Left hand down, right hand reaches. And rise back up. And reach with the left hand. Stay grounded in that left sitting bone. Rise back up with the core engaged. Bring the left hand down and reach with the right hand. And one more time on each side. Reaching with the left hand. Oh, nice stretch on the left side body. That feels good. Keep your spine nice and long and inhale and rise all the way back up. Bring your hands to your knees. Breathe in deeply. Let your spine get long. And then as you exhale, chin to chest. Draw the navel in. Bring your forehead down towards the mat. Maybe you can touch your forehead to the mat. On an inhale, rise back up. Now bring the hands behind you. I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what I'm doing. Interlace your fingers, straighten your elbows, bring the shoulder blades together, lift your chin high, take a breath. And as you exhale, bring the hands back to the knees, palms face down. Now draw your navel in, chin to chest, let your whole body collapse into the forward bend. Bring the forehead down, maybe touching the mat with the forehead. Inhale, rise back up, bring the hands behind, interlace the fingers, press the knuckles towards the back of your mat, lift your chin. A little bit of a back bend. And then release. And one more time, hands to knees. Draw your navel in, chin to chest. Forehead comes down. Elbows are bent here. On an inhale, rise back up. 
And the last time, bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers, and straighten the elbows if you can. Now bring the shoulder blades a little closer together on the back, and then lift your chin high. Take a breath. And release the hands. Bring them down to the knees. Let's roll over the knees and come to table pose. Once you're in table pose, make sure the knees are under the hips and the hands are right under the shoulders. Let's do cow pose. Drop your belly and lift your chin. And then as you exhale, move into cat pose, pressing the hands into the mat. And let your forehead come a little closer to the knees. Draw the navel in. And cow pose. And exhale to cow. One more time. Inhale to cow pose. And a big exhale to cat. Pause there for a moment as you feel your body move more deeply into the stretch. And then come back to a neutral spine. Once you're there, press your hips to the right. Keep that left knee on the mat. And then press the hips over to the left. Keep the right knee on the mat. And over to the other side. To the right. And to the left. And one more time. Off to the right. And then to the left. And then press your hips back to your heels. Into a modified version of child's pose. Walking the hands forward. Feel the stretch in the back. Now glide the hips forward. And then drop them down. Into our knees down. Upward facing dog. Press the chest forward. Let the shoulder blades come a little closer together on the back. And then press back towards child's pose. Press your hands into the mat. Keep the big toes apart from one another. So the big toes are about the same distance apart as the knees. Glide forward, drop the hips and lift the chin. And exhale and press back again towards child's pose. We don't need, we don't move the knees. I can't talk. Drop the hips forward and down as we move towards child's pose. Not in this flow. And one more time through, press the hips back to the heels, feel a stretch in the back, and then glide the hips forward and down. Pause for a moment now in this knees down, upward facing dog, and then look off to your left, and then back to center and look to the right, and do that again, off to the left, and then off to the right. Bring your gaze back to center, and then come back to table pose, and then from table pose, tuck your toes and lift your hips, finding downward facing dog. I want you to pause here for just a moment, pressing your hands into the mat, bending the knees a bit, so that you're working on lengthening the spine and not so much on stretching the hamstrings. And for most of us, if the legs are straight, you're going to feel a big stretch in the hamstrings. Now, pedal it out. And we're going to do a dynamic stretch of the hamstring. So now we are focusing on the hamstring muscles. And we do that by straightening each leg, pressing the heel of that straightened leg down towards the mat, and alternating from side to side as we do this for just a moment on each side. So we don't hold the stretch. It's not a static stretch. It's dynamic. And one more time. And then slowly begin to walk your feet forward towards your hands. Then eventually, let your head drop down in a standing forward fold. Keep your chin on your chest now. Round your spine as you rise. Once you come up, let your arms float high. And then bring your hands to heart center, pressing the palms together. This is a great opportunity to just take a moment and breathe. Feel your whole body. Feel the breath moving through the body. Feel your feet beautifully grounded on the mat with the weight evenly divided between the feet. So feel nice and centered. Now let's flow. Bring the arms up and overhead and then exhale, fold forward. Come to a half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. You can either, even keep, sorry, you can either keep your fingertips on the mat the way I am Maybe lift your chin, working on lengthening the spine. Or you can bring the hands to the top of the shins and bring your spine up so it's level the mat. Either way, what we're trying to do here is lengthen the spine by reaching the tailbone back and the head forward. Then exhale, fold forward, let your head drop down, bend the knees if you need to. Now bring the weight in the front of the feet 
and round the spine as you rise up, arms float high, and look up as you bring your palms together and then pull the hands down to heart center. Good work. Let's do it again. Inhale up and back. Exhale, fold forward. Half lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, let your head drop down. Nice stretch in the back of the legs. Press into the front of the feet as your weight shifts into the balls of the feet. The heels almost float and rise. Get a reach up high. And then exhale the hands, bringing them to heart center. Do that again. Inhale up and back. Exhale, fold forward. Come to a half lift. Let it go. Head drops down. Press into the front of the feet and rise. Reach up high. Look up and bring the hands to heart center. Twice more. Inhale up and back. Exhale, fold forward. Half lift. I know we're speeding up. Let your head drop down. Press into the front of the feet and rise. And exhale the hands to heart center. Last one. Inhale up and back. Exhale and fold forward. Come to a half lift. Lengthen the spine and let the head drop down. Front of the feet, press and rise, look up. And then bring your hands to heart center. Now let your eyes close and breathe. Find two more breaths. Beautiful, and one more. Now hinge at the hips, folding forward, nice and slow as you come down. Maybe your knees stay straight here. Maybe they don't bend, so you feel that stretch coming into the back of the legs. Bring your hands to the mat, come to a half lift. Then as you exhale, leave your right foot forward and step your left foot all the way back into a runner's lunge with that right knee bent about 90 degrees. Now bring the left knee to the mat, untuck the toes on the left foot, press into the right foot and rise. Low crescent lunge, reach up high, now arms come out to a T. Take a twist to the right. Left elbow comes to right knee. Join the palms and reach the right elbow high. Spine stays long. Keep pressing into the right foot. One more breath. Beautiful work. Keep the palms together as you press into the right foot and come back up. Then reach up high. And then bring the hands down on either side of that right foot. Tuck your toes and bring your left knee off the mat. And then step the right foot back to plank pose. Squeeze the glutes. Squeeze them towards one another. Lift your chin if you like. Look forward towards the front of the mat. Take a breath. Now bring your knees to the mat. The chest and chin will follow. Elbows bend. Cobra pose. Bhujangasana. Press the pubic bone down into the mat. Feel that deep, beautiful back bend. And then release. Now tuck your toes. Stiffen your body, push to plank, and lift the hips into downward facing dog. Stretch it out, lots of length in the spine. You're gonna feel a stretch in the back of the legs, at least most of you will. On an inhale, reach the left leg up, not too high, and then step the left foot forward so it comes between the hands. We've come to runner's lunge on our second side. Now the right knee comes to the mat, untuck the toes, press in the left foot and rise, reach up high. Keep pressing the left knee forward. Now the arms to a T. Take a twist to the left. Bring the right elbow to the knee and join the palms. Left elbow is high. So watch your alignment with the arms. Left elbow over the palms, the palms over the right elbow. And probably that left knee over the left heel. Keep the palms together. Press in the left foot. Come back to center. Palms are at heart center. Reach up high. And then exhale the hands down. Bring them on either side of the left foot. Tuck the toes and bring your right knee off the mat so that right leg is straight. Now press back on that right heel and then step the right foot forward so it comes between the hands. Let your head drop down, standing forward fold. Take a couple of breaths. And one more. Now arms come out to a T, reverse swan dive, the weights in the front of the feet. And then let your arms float up high. And then exhale, bringing your hands to heart center. Press the palms together and breathe. Ah, feel the breath flowing so beautifully through your body. Now leave the hands at heart center. Hinge at the hips and fold forward. Come to a half lift. Ardha Uttanasana is the name of the pose. 
And then as you exhale, let your head drop down. Let your head get even heavier. So the head is reaching down towards the mat. Now keep the right foot forward and set the left foot back. Second time here. And this time, rise to a high crescent lunge. So that left knee is off the mat if you can. If you prefer to modify by bringing the left knee to the mat, feel free to do that. Press into both feet and press the feet apart from one another like you're stretching the mat. Arms come out to a T now and take a twist. Keep pressing into both feet. Palms face to the right side of the mat and then back to center. Reach up high. And then as you exhale, hands come down. Now step that right foot back to plank pose. Pause in plank. Lift your chin a little bit if you want to. This is just another way to do plank pose. Press back on the heels so you feel a stretch in the uh, calf muscles on both feet. One more breath. Now flow through a vinyasa. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Nice, deep, beautiful breath in upward dog. And when you're ready, slowly begin to lift your hips high into downward facing dog. Stretch it out. Now on an inhale, lift your left leg up. Lift up nice and high. Press the right heel to the mat. Press the hands into the mat. And then set that left foot forward, bringing it between the hands. And then rise to a high crescent lunge on our second side. That left knee is pointing straight forward and the right heel is pressing down towards the mat. Reach up through the wrists. One more breath. Arms come out to a T. Take your twist to the left. Palms face to the left. Reach the hands apart from one another. Press both feet into the mat. Press the feet apart from one another, creating sturdiness. Back to center. Reach the arms high. Then as you exhale, hands come down, framing that left foot. Now step the left foot back to plank pose, and let's find three breaths in plank. And one more. Now bring your knees to the mat, then cross your ankles behind you, and come to a seat. Once you're seated, bring the feet out in front, and then bring the sole of the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Scoot over onto the uh, left side of the mat, or right side rather, of the mat, so your left knee is still above the mat. Now reach the arms high, interlace the fingers, point the index fingers, finding arrow mudra, reach up high and press both sitting bones down. Now hinge at the hips, fold forward, and then inhale, rise back up. Do that again, hinging at the hips and rising back up. That's a core engagement as you do that. One more time, reaching forward. And the inhale, rise back up. Now the arms come out to a T. Take a twist to the left. Bring the left hand down, plant it right behind you. Press into that left knee, the right foot. Reach the right arm high and then let it drop down. Let your head drop down, press the hips up. Then as you exhale, let the hips drop down, but don't bring them all the way to the mat. And then lift them back up. Let's do that one more time on this side. Hips drop down and then reach. Let the head drop, press the hips high. And then as you exhale, bring the hips all the way down to the mat. Reach the arms high, square the shoulders to the extended right leg. And then arrow mudra, reach up high through the index fingers, lengthening the spine. Now hinge at the hips, folding forward, press into the heel and rise back up. Twice more, reach and rising, and the last one, reach, and rise, and release the hands, and bring them down. Bring both legs out in front. Now bend the knees, and reach the arms high, and exhale, fold forward. See if you can bring your shoulders so that they're kind of in the creases, the back of the, of the knees. Keep your spine nice and long. And bring the hands to the mat and slowly rise all the way back up. Straighten both legs. And then bend the right knee. Bring the sole of the right foot to the inside of the left thigh. Reach the arms high. We're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. I'm going to scoot over to the left side of the mat so that 
my right knee will end up on the mat. Reach the arms high, keep the spine long, stretch up as you press down on the sitting modes. Now hinge at the hips, fold forward. Mm, nice stretch in the hips and the low back as you rise. Core engages as you come up. Hinge at the hips, fold forward, and rise back up. Let's do it one more time. Reaching through the index fingers and rising back up. Bring the arms out to a T. Take a twist to the right, plant the right hand behind you, then press into that hand, lift the hips, reach the left hand high, and then bring the left hand down. Let it drop down as your head drops down. And then let the hips drop, just like we did on the other side, and lift up. That second one, we're gonna do it a third time. Hips drop and lift. Let your head drop now. And then let the hips drop all the way down as you square your shoulders to the extended left leg. Reach up high. Arrow mudra again. Reach up through the index fingers. Hinge at the hips and fold forward. And then rise twice more. Folding forward and rising back up. And last time, folding forward and inhale, rise all the way back up, reach up high, and then release your hands and bring them down. Good work. Bring both legs out in front of you. Press the heels away. Bring the feet so they're about shoulder width apart. Reach the arms high. Now, take a hold of the left wrist with the right hand and then pull. So we're taking, let me turn to the other side, or to turn to face you, and pull so that you're creating a stretch on the right or left side of the body. And then back to center, press up through the left palm, stretch, and then switch your grip. So take a hold of the right elbow, or right wrist rather, with the left hand, and then stretch so you feel that nice stretch on the right side body. Come back to center, reach up through that right palm, and then release the hands full forward, hinging at the hips. Let your head drop down. Two breaths. And one more. Now keep your chin on your chest, let your spine round as you rise, drawing the navel in. Now come to a uh, cross-legged position, and once you're there, roll over the knees into table pose. Once you're in table pose, pause, and then tuck your toes and lift your hips. And let's find downward facing dog. On an inhale, lift the left leg up, three-legged dog now, open the hips to the left, Press that right heel down to the mat. Keep pressing both hands into the mat. And then level the hips off. And then step the left foot forward, bringing the left foot between the hands. Left knee bent about 90 degrees. Spin the right heel to the mat. And let's come up to warrior two, our first warrior two of the practice. Bend the left knee a little bit more. And remember what it's like to relax the upper body a little bit. Mm. Can you let yourself soften into warrior two as though you've never done this pose before? And just begin to notice what it feels like, what your whole body feels like in the pose, the legs and the hips and the arms and the chest and the back, the neck. Bring your gaze forward a little bit, then all the way back if you want. Then maybe forward again. Now extended side angle pose. Bring the elbow to the knee and reach with the right hand. Press into the pinky toe of that right foot. Stretch out the right side body. One more breath. Then rise back to warrior two. Now straighten the left leg. Let the right hand drop down to the leg and reach with the left hand into a reverse triangle pose. Stretching the left side body this time. Now the arms come back out to a T. And reach the left hand forward. Coming into triangle pose. Trikonasana. Right hand reaches high. That right hand is pretty much right over your right shoulder. Then let that left knee bend. And rise back to warrior two. Reestablish yourself in warrior two. Take a big breath. And one more. And then release the hands down on either side of that left foot. Come up onto the ball of the right foot. And then step the left foot back, plank pose. And we'll find three breaths in plank. Two more. Stay with it, building core strength, building heat, which you're probably feeling. 
And one last breath. Now find a vinyasa in the upward dog. And when you're ready, slowly move in to downward dog. Stretch it out. As you inhale, right leg rises. And then three-legged dog, opening the hips to the right. Keep pressing that left heel down. Open the hips a little more if you can. Then bring your hips back so they're level. And step the right foot all the way forward so it comes between the hands. I'm going to move to the other side of my mat so you can see me. Spin your left heel to the mat and rise to warrior two. Take a breath in warrior two. <sighs> Beginning the practice of viewing things, experiencing things anew as though you'd never experienced them before. Extended side angle pose. We're going to find a stretch on the left side of the body as we press in the pinky toe of the left foot and reach through that left hand. Notice there's a long straight line between my, the fingertips on my left hand and the pinky toe of my left foot. Stretch it out. Then rise, reverse triangle, right leg straightens. Left hand comes down, right hand reaches up and back. Press into that right foot, stretch it out. Now the arms come out to a T. And triangle pose. Right hand drops down, the left hand reaches high. Stretch it up. Spine lengthens. Notice the stacking of the hand over the shoulder and the shoulder over the other shoulder. Now bend the right knee and rise back to warrior two. Take a breath. Relax the upper body. Beautiful. Now cartwheel your hands down on either side of your right foot. Come up onto the ball of the left foot and the right foot steps back to plank pose. Take a breath. Now flow through your vinyasa into upward dog. See if you can deepen the back bend. Then when you're ready, tuck your toes and find downward facing dog. I'm going to move to the front of the mat again. Or facing the front of the mat anyway. Now on an inhale, lift the left leg up again. Point the toes, press the right heel down, stretch it out. And now a three-quarter step forward with that left foot. Now spin the right heel to the mat. The right leg is straight. Now straighten the left leg. And then slowly begin to rise and reach your arms high. And then bring your hands to heart center. So both legs are straight. The toes on the right foot are pointing about 35 degrees towards the upper right corner of the mat. The toes on the left foot are pointing straight forward. Both legs again are straight. Breathe deeply. Now we're going to stretch the chest a bit. And to do that, we need to bring our hands behind us. You can bring the palms together, and then if you can, point the fingers towards the sky. That'll really open up the chest so you can breathe. If that doesn't work for you, opposite elbows are an option. Or you can interlace the fingers and straighten the elbows, pressing the knuckles towards that right heel. Find whichever configuration of the arms works for you. And then just breathe. Shoulder square to the front of the mat. Now, hinge at the hips and very slowly fold forward. Try not to round at the belly. Keep the spine nice and long. Come down about halfway and then press into the left foot and rise back up. This time, reach the arms up and overhead and hinge at the hips. Fold forward. Come down about halfway and then rise back up. 
Now the arms come out to a T, palms face down, hinge at the hips. Now bring the right hand down to the mat, reach the left hand high into a twist. And then bring the left hand down to the inside of that left foot. See if you can keep that left knee st uh, straight so it's not bent and reach the right hand high. And then bring your right hand down. Bend that left knee. You may scoot that right foot back a little bit. And then step the left foot back so it meets the right foot in plank pose. You can lift your chin if you want in plank. Two more breaths. Feel the breath moving in the body. Feel the energy moving, following the breath. When you're ready, vinyasa into upward dog. And downward dog. Hmm. On your next inhale, reach your right leg up. Press the left heel down. Then find that three-quarter step forward, this time with the right foot forward. Spin the left heel to the mat, straighten the right leg, and then rise. Come all the way up. Square your shoulders so they're square to the front of the mat. Both legs are straight. Toes on the left foot pointing to the upper left corner of the mat or thereabouts. Now bring your hands behind you. Interlace the fingers behind your back in the awkward way. Press the knuckles down towards the heels. Notice the expansiveness in the chest and breathe into that space, that expanse you've created. Now keep your spine long, hinge at the hips, fold forward. And then rise back up so we came down about halfway. If you want to go further, feel free to do that. Arms out to a T now. And halfway down. Maybe even further if you want. And then rise back up. Now arms reach up over the head. Biceps stay on either side of the ears. Square your shoulders again to the front of the mat. Hinge at the hips. Come down halfway. And then rise back up. Wow, a lot of core strength. Now bring the arms down. Hands come down on either side of that right foot. Both legs are still straight. Left hand on the mat now. Reach the right hand high. Look up if you want. And then bring the right hand down to the inside of that right foot. Reach the left hand high. Nice twist. And then bring the left hand down. And both hands walk forward as that right knee bends. Now step the right foot back into plank pose. Take a breath or two, and flow through a vinyasa when you're ready. Upward dog, and downward dog. Two more breaths in downward dog. Stretch it out, press the heels down towards the mat, bend the knees if you want. And release the knees to the mat now. Bring the knees apart a bit, big toes touch. Let's find child's pose. Let your forehead come down towards the mat. Maybe the forehead rests on the mat. Five breaths now in child's pose. Two more breaths now in child's pose. And one more. Now rise from child's pose, back to table pose, and knees about hip width apart, hands right under the shoulders. Now reach your right leg back, straighten the leg, and reach the left hand forward into table extension pose. So the leg, that lifted leg, and the lifted arm are about parallel to your mat, and then reach through the fingertips and the toes, lengthening. Two more breaths. I know it's difficult. Lots of core strength. Notice what it feels like. And then bring the left hand down. Bend the right knee and lift your chin. Lift that right knee up towards the sky. Point the toes on the right foot. This is tiger pose. One more breath. Now bring chin towards the knee. 
maybe touch the knee to the chin, and then back to tiger pose, and do that one more time. Knee towards chin, and back to tiger pose, and then bring that right knee down so it meets the left knee. Now, cow pose, dropping the belly, chin lifts, and exhale to cat. Twice more, inhaling to cow. Big deep breath in, and exhale to cat. Make sure all the breath comes out one more time. Inhale to cow, and exhale to cat, and come back to a neutral spine. Let's go to the other side in our table extension pose. So reach the right hand forward this time and the left foot back. You can point the toes on the left foot if you want or press through the heel. Either way works. Left elbow is straight. Press that left palm into the mat. Keep reaching through the fingertips. Reaching through that right or left foot. Good. Now bring that right hand back down to the mat. Straighten the elbows and then bend the uh, knee. Point the toes and lift that left knee up. Lift your chin, tiger pose. Now bring knee towards chin, maybe touching the chin if you can, and then back to tiger pose. And one more time, knee towards chin, and then back to tiger pose, and then bring that left knee down. Drop your hips to the heels, and then rise through table pose, Drop the hips, lift the chin. Now bring your knees off the mat into upward facing dog. Deep back bend. Now downward facing dog. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, stretch it out. Glide forward to plank, then bring your knees to the mat and rise to kneeling. Bring your hands to the low back. This is going to be baby camel pose. And if you feel like you want to, go ahead and do the full version of camel pose. On this one, I'm just going to do baby camel. So press the hands into the mat. Notice my fingers are pointing straight down and pressing through the heels of my hands into the very lowest part of my back, right above my glutes. Bring the elbows together a little bit and press the hips forward. Let your head drop down and breathe. Couple more breaths. Not easy to talk in this posture. And maybe one more. Keep pressing the hands into the back as you slowly rise. Now bring the hands down and bring your forehead, or sorry, the top of your head down to the mat. Walk your hands back towards your knees, round the spine. A couple breaths here. And one more. Let's rise back up through table pose and then to kneeling. We're going to do a second camel pose. You can do the same as we did before, a baby camel pose, or if you like, you can do a full version of camel pose. Either way. Make sure that your hips are more or less right over the knees. Uh, in the pose. So if your hips are way back here, you're not getting the back bend that you might want out of the pose. So when you're ready, move into your version of camel pose. And I bring my knees apart just a little bit. About two more breaths. Beautiful, deep, deep back bend. But one more breath. Core engage as deeply as you rise. And then as you exhale, bring the hands down. And then bring the top of the head to the mat. Walk the hands back towards the knees. Press the palms into the mat. The elbows are bent about 90 degrees. One more breath. And that's it. Come up. Now, hero pose. So sit on your heels, palms to thighs, elbows in, tucked in nice and close to the body. One more breath. 
Now come to a seat and bring the legs out in front to begin and then bend the left elbow, or left elbow, the left knee and see if you can bring that left foot to the top of the thigh so that left ankle is resting on the thigh. You might even be able to bring the uh, heel all the way back to the hip. It's up to you and if none of that works you can always bring the uh, sole of the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. So find a posture or a version of this posture that works for you and then make sure that left knee is pressing down and if you find the left knee up high, remember that your modification is to sit on something, either a block or a pillow or a blanket, folded blanket. Now bend the right knee and then pick the right foot up and see if you can get a hold of the right foot with the right hand. And then if you want, you might be able to bring the left hand to the right foot as well. So both hands are on the foot. And then maybe lift that right foot up a little higher and press the left knee away. So we're pressing this left knee away, not with the hands, I was just illustrating, and probably not very effectively. So press that left knee away just with the strength of your legs and feel that stretch, mostly in the hip on the left side. And then you can release, or you can come into lotus pose. Full lotus if you're able to. Not all of you can do that, I recognize that, or just a cross-legged position. Now lengthen the spine and let your hips hinge, or your upper body hinge at the hips, it's a better way to say that, and fold forward without rounding too much. And then slowly rise back up. Let's do that one more time. Hinging at the hips. And rising back up. Stay in your cross-legged position, whatever version you're in, and take a big twist to the left. Bring that left hand down behind you. Look over the left shoulder. Press down on both sitting bones. Make sure your spine is nice and long. Remember to surrender into the twist. Don't force it. Then let it go. Let's go over to the other side, bring the left hand to the right knee, right hand is down behind, press down on the sitting bones, breathe in, the spine lengthens, and exhale, and just soften into that beautiful twist. One more breath on this side. Beautiful, let it go. Come back to center, come out of your cross-legged position, and straighten the left leg, and let's bring that right foot to either the thigh if you can, or maybe bring that heel all the way back to the left hip. And then bend the left knee, and remember if you can't do either of those, sole the foot to the inside of the thigh. Now bend the uh, left knee, and get a hold of that left foot with your left hand. Straighten the leg if you're able to. Probably creates a big stretch on the back of the leg. Maybe bring the right hand to the foot as well. Hmm. Now we'll work on lengthening the spine and just breathe. When you're ready, begin to press that right knee away from you so that you start to feel a nice stretch in the hip on the right side. And let it go. Bend the knee and lotus pose, padmasana if you want, or just a cross-legged posture is fine. Breathe in deeply, then exhale, and twist your right this time to start. Left hand to right knee, right hand down behind you. Remember to press both sitting bones down and draw your navel in this time. And then as you exhale, gently twist over to the right. Let it go, come back to center, and over to the other side. Right hand to left knee, left hand down behind. Maybe you can let that left shoulder come back a little bit more. Looking over the left shoulder, feeling a nice stretch in the spine, the whole spine, including the neck. Let it go. Bring it all back to center. And we can uncross the legs now. And bend the knees a little bit. Flip your palms so they face up. Lengthen the spine. Now round the spine and come down. So press your tailbone into the mat first then your sacrum, 
and then begin to feel each vertebra as it rolls down to the mat. Once you're there, let your head come down, flip your palms so they face down, and then lift the legs up into legs up the wall pose. And let's find a total of seven breaths in legs up the wall pose. Let the breath lengthen, breathing in and breathing out. Maybe going from four or five breaths, or four or five uh, counts, up to six, seven, perhaps even eight counts. Find four more breaths. You know, legs up the wall pose. With the breath lengthening. This pose is called Viparita Karani in Sanskrit. And one more breath. Now bend your knees and bring the soles of the feet to the mat with the feet about hip width apart. And now either bridge pose or if you prefer wheel pose, press the feet into the mat and lift the hips. Remember to try and bring your shoulder blades together on your back. And that'll allow you to move into a deeper back bend. Press the feet into the mat and lift the hips. The knees have a tendency to come apart a bit. Try and bring them back together. And two more breaths. And one more. Beautiful. Release the tailbone, release the hands if you have them interlaced. And bring the knees to the body. Keep the back of the head on the mat. Hug the knees in, and at the same time, let your shoulder blades come down towards the mat. Now, supine figure four. Bring the left ankle to the right knee. Interlace the fingers behind that right leg and hug the right knee towards your body as the left knee presses away. See if you can feel your sacrum and perhaps even your tailbone in contact with the mat. Press through that left knee. Mm, big, big opening in the hip on the left side. And that's it. Release that. Let's go right over to the other side. Interlace the fingers behind that left leg. Bring the right ankle to the left knee. Press that right knee away. Can you begin to feel the stretch in the hip on that right side? Perhaps experiencing this pose in a way you've never experienced it before, as though you've never done it. Just notice all the sensations, all the feelings. And let it go. Bring it back to center. Now release. Now bring the arms out to a T. And we're going to do a supine twist, and I'm going to give you an option. You can, even, you can either begin in legs up the wall, keeping the legs straight and the feet touching and the knees touching or you can bend the knees. Bending the knees will be less of a challenge, straightening the legs more of a challenge. Let your knees travel or your feet either way, over to the right, depending on which version you're doing, and your gaze is to the left. So we'll get a nice spinal twist. And then slowly bring the knees back to center, or the feet, and then over to the other side. Your gaze shifts to the right, the feet or the knees are to the left. You feel that twist in the spine that's called spinal rotation. And then bring it all back to center. Bring the legs back down, or the arms rather, back down by your side. And straighten the legs. And flip your palms so they face up. Let's find our Shavasana. Like all the other poses we've done, Shavasana is a pose 
that I invite you to experience anew. Begin to notice the sensations. Begin to notice the feelings. Notice the whole experience of Shavasana. What does it feel like to have your body resting on your mat this way? How does your breath feel in Shavasana? What thoughts are arising for you? Just begin to notice it all. Settling beautifully into our final resting pose. Let all the muscles of the body begin to relax. Relax your face, the cheeks, and the jaw. Relax your tongue. Relax your neck. Let the shoulders soften. Relax your arms and your hands. Let any tension that you feel in the back begin to dissipate. Let your hips relax. And the thighs and the knees and the lower part of the legs. Feel your ankles relaxing and then your feet and your toes. Now bring your awareness to your whole body. Just feel your whole body as one unit. Letting go of the need to focus on separate parts. Just feel the whole body. Now feel that whole body breathing in and breathing out. Inflating and deflating. Awareness to the whole body. When you're ready, allow your knees to begin to bend. Roll to your side. Once you're on your side, you can keep your eyes closed down if you like. And pay attention to how you feel in this posture. Just notice what it's like. Keeping the eyes gently closed, bring yourself to a seat. And once you're seated, let your hands come to heart center, pressing the palms together. Draw a deep breath in, and then let your breath gently flow out. Do that again, but this time I want you to imagine that this is the first breath you've ever taken. Draw it in. Feel how amazing it is. And now exhale, let it go. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me and practicing yoga today. Join me if you like in offering loving kindness to all beings. May you be happy and well and safe and may all beings be peaceful and at ease. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed our practice of beginning anew and 
I'll see you again soon. Take care.